Bibi Netanyahu. Yossi, 
and brought him to Israel. Yossi became one of Israel's greatest and bravest generals. And today he serves as a minister in my cabinet. Yossi's life is the story of the Jewish people. The story of a powerless and stateless people who became a strong and proud nation able to defend itself. And ladies and gentlemen, Israel must always reserve the right to defend itself. Israel's ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren. <laughs> Michael, you're doing an outstanding job. And thank you for everything you're doing for our country. And thank you for everything you're doing for the friendship between Israel and the United States. I, will, I also want to recognize Ambassador Dan Shapiro, U.S. Ambassador to Israel. You know, Dan, President Obama was right. You heard you Hebrew is improving. Uh, it's not up to par yet with Michael's English, but it's getting better. You have a way to go. And Dan, we appreciate everything you've been doing to strengthen the alliance between our two countries. Thank you. So, uh, are there any students here tonight? A few? A few thousand. Anyone here from uh, Florida? From New York? How about from Wisconsin? That's important, I'll tell you about it later. From California? Oh. Well, you're the future. And thank you all for ensuring the future of the great alliance between Israel and the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I'd like to talk to you about a subject that no one's been talking about recently. Yep. Iran. Every day I open the newspapers. And I read about all these red lines and timelines. I read about what Israel has uh, supposedly decided to do, or what Israel might do. Well, I'm not going to talk to you about what Israel will do or will not do. I never talk about that. But I do want to talk to you about the dangers of a nuclear-armed Iran. I want to explain why Iran must never be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. President Obama has reiterated his commitment to prevent that from happening. He stated clearly that all options are on the table and that American policy is not contained. Well, Israel, Israel has exactly the same policy. We're determined, we're determined to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons. We leave all options on the table and containment is definitely not an option. The Jewish state will not allow those who seek our destruction to possess 
the means to achieve that goal. A nuclear armed Iran must be stopped. Now, amazingly, some people refuse to acknowledge that Iran's goal is to develop nuclear weapons. You see, Iran claims to, uh, to do everything it's doing, to, that it's enriching uranium to develop medical isotopes. Yeah, that's right. A country that builds underground nuclear facilities that develops intercontinental ballistic missiles, that manufactures thousands of centrifuges, and that absorbs crippling sanctions, is doing all that in order to advance medical science. So you see, when, uh, when that Iranian ICBM is flying through the air to a location near you, you've got nothing to worry about. It's only carrying medical isotopes. Ladies and gentlemen, if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then what is it? What is it? That's right. It's a duck. But this duck is a nuclear duck. And it's time the world started calling a duck a duck. Just a few months ago, 
He tried to assassinate the Saudi ambassador to the United States. This is in a restaurant just a few blocks from here. The assassins didn't care that several senators and congressmen would have been murdered in the process. Iran accuses, and this is real football, Iran accuses the American government of orchestrating 9-11. And that's as brazen as denying the Holocaust, which they do. And Iran, Iran calls for Israel's destruction, and they work for this destruction. They work for this every day, each day, relentlessly. Now, I say all that to, to make one point clear. This is how Iran behaves today without nuclear weapons. Think of how they'll behave tomorrow with nuclear weapons. Iran will be even more reckless and a lot more dangerous. Now, there's been plenty of talk recently about the cost of stopping Iran. I think it's time we started talking about the cost of not stopping Iran. A nuclear armed Iran would dramatically increase terrorism by giving terrorists a nuclear umbrella. Let me try to explain to you what that means, a nuclear umbrella. It means that Iran's terror proxies like Hezbollah and Hamas will be emboldened to attack the United States and Israel and others because they'll be backed by a power that has atomic bombs. So the terrorism we see today could grow tenfold, if not more. A nuclear armed Iran could choke off the world's oil supply. It could make real its threat to close the Straits of Hormuz. Now, if you're worried about the price of oil today, imagine how high oil prices could get once Iran, a nuclear-armed Iran, starts blackmailing the world. Then you really have a problem with oil prices. And if Iran gets nuclear weapons, this would set off a mad dash by Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, and others to acquire nuclear weapons of their own. The world's most volatile region would become a nuclear tinderbox waiting to go off. And here's the worst nightmare of all. With nuclear weapons, Iran could threaten all of us with nuclear terrorism. It could put a nuclear device in a ship heading to any port or in a truck parked in any city anywhere in the world. I want you to think about what it would mean to have nuclear weapons in the hands of those, these radicals who lead millions of people in chance of death to America and death to Israel. I want you to think about all that and I'm sure that when you do, you'll reach a simple conclusion. For the sake of our prosperity, for the sake of our security, for the sake of our children, Iran must not be allowed to acquire nuclear weapons. nuclear weapons program peacefully. No one would be happier than me and the people of Israel if Iran dismantled this program. But so far that hasn't happened. For 15 years, I've been warning that a nuclear-armed Iran is a grave danger to my country and to the peace and security of the entire world. For the last decade, the international community has tried diplomacy. It 
hasn't worked. For six years, the international community has applied sanctions. That hasn't worked either. I appreciate President Obama's recent efforts to impose even tougher sanctions against Iran. And these sanctions are hurting Iran's economy. But unfortunately, Iran's nuclear program continues to march forward. My friends, Israel has waited, patiently waited, for the international community to resolve this issue. We've waited for diplomacy to work. We've waited for sanctions to work. None of us can afford to wait much longer. As Prime Minister of Israel, I will never let my people live in the shadow of annihilation. Ladies and gentlemen, some commentators would have you believe that stopping Iran from getting the bomb is more dangerous than letting Iran have the bomb. They say that a military confrontation with Iran would undermine the efforts already underway, that it would be ineffective and that it would provoke an even more vindictive response by Iran. I've read these arguments before. In fact, I've read them before. In my desk, I have copies of an exchange of letters between the World, the World Jewish Congress and the U.S. War Department. Here are the words. The year was 1944. The World Jewish Congress implored the American government to bomb Auschwitz. The reply came five days later. I want to read it to you. Quote, such an operation could be executed only by diverting considerable air support essential to the success of our forces elsewhere. And in any case, it would be of such doubtful efficacy that it would not warrant the use of our resources. And my friends, here's the most remarkable sentence of all. And I quote, such an effort might provoke even more vindictive action by the Germans. Think about that. Even more vindictive action than the Holocaust. My friends, 2012 is not 1944. The American government today is different. It's different. You heard that in President Obama's speech yesterday. But here's my point. The Jewish people are also different. Today we have a state of our own. And the purpose of the Jewish state is to defend Jewish lives and to secure the Jewish future. Never again will, be, will the Jewish people be powerless and supplicants for our fate and our very survival. Never again.
must always have the ability to defend itself by itself against any threats. My friends, we deeply appreciate the great alliance between our two countries. But when it comes to Israel's survival, we must always remain the masters of our fate. weapons and they 
uh, our ability to centrifuges to enrich this far beyond the, what you would need to enrich uranium if you were really interested in medical isotopes. So it's clear they, they want to have a bomb, and if they have a bomb, uh, this regime's record in the, over the last 40 years is uh, is one that ought to give everybody pause and clearly gives the Israelis deep concern because uh, this is an existential question. It, it literally goes to the survival of the Jewish people and the state of Israel.